Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. My name is Brandy and this week we are going to be working on this cute little Demi Lune table um, that I picked up. And when I got this, I actually wanted to match it up with a mirror. So we all tend to have mirrors in our collection that come with dressers. Uh, they end up not being claimed or we don't use them. So I had a collection of mirrors and I picked this one out. It's got a, a semicircular shape to it, just like my table does. And so I'm gonna use that shape to tie them together. And then I'm gonna use a finish, uh, the same finish on both. That's gonna make them a matching set. This is a great thing that you can do with uh, unused dresser mirrors. So I'm gonna show you some ideas on how you can take those mirrors and repurpose them into a whole new look, a whole new function uh, that really makes them desirable again. So uh, this table, we're gonna use Carts and Millie paint, which was a beautiful paint to work with. It blended really well. We actually did this uh, piece live on my Facebook and my Instagram page. So you can also catch the full version of the live videos there. Um, but here's a quick version of how we got to this fin finished look. Wait till you see the top on this table. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, let's walk through this process. Let's get started. Here's where I started on this table, a super cute little accent piece, but I think we can make it better. I started out by giving my piece a really good cleaning and removing that piece of hardware. It was really easy because I only had one piece of hardware and this is a fairly small piece. As I was cleaning it, I saw that this dark wood uh, started bleeding into my cleaner. And so I knew that I needed to give it a coat of primer. Bleed through is the oils from the table coming through and it can discolor your paint over time. And so I'm just gonna give this a coat of Wiesel primer in light gray. I'm gonna brush it over the top and this will uh, create a barrier and keep those oils from bleeding through over time. With my piece completely primed and nice and dry, I looked at the top and I saw, I think there's some beautiful wood under here. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand this top down using my Surf Rep sander. I started with an 80 grit paper and then I'm gonna move up to a 120 and then a 220 grit. And that's gonna get this nice and smooth to where I can finish the top in a raw wood finish. Some tops can be more stubborn than others, so I always do a test spot to see if it's going to sand well or do I need to use a chemical stripper first. This one ended up sanding okay. It was pretty stubborn, but I did end up being able to cut through it. Just took a little bit of time. As soon as I started sanding, I started seeing this beautiful wood being revealed underneath. This is not a particularly old piece or a high-end piece, but the wood grain that it had was completely beautiful. I didn't want to cover it up again. The grain had a lot of variation in it, and when it was covered up with that dark stain, you just didn't notice what a pretty tabletop this was. It even has knots in it and imperfections, but I actually think those add to the character of the table. Once my wood tabletop was all nice and sanded down, I get to go to the fun part and start adding some paint. So I'm using a new paint this week and it's called Carts and Millie. This is an Australian brand, but it is available here in the United States. I'll add a link in the description where you can find this paint. And the two colors that I chose were absolutely beautiful. This sage green color and a gray that I used for shading. These two colors were called Elm Avenue and Manning Gray, but Carts and Millie does have a beautiful selection of colors. It's actually a huge selection, and I don't think that there's any in there that I don't like. The other thing I loved about this brand was the personal story of it, uh, so check them out for sure. So I started out by applying my green paint, that's the Elm Avenue, and then I'm just gonna do a little bit of shading in the Manning Gray. I noticed right away that these paints blended really well together, so I was super happy with the performance on that. It dried to a nice, clean, smooth finish. Overall, it was a paint that I really enjoyed using. So I focused my shading in the gray around the top and the bottom of each leg and then around the skirting of this table. And this is just going to emphasize some of those areas by giving them a little bit of a darker color. This is a great finish to start with if you're just learning to blend with some paint. Choose two colors that are slightly different in shade and practice blending with those. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it over spindles. Blending over spindles can be a challenge. I just use a horizontal brush stroke and I'm sort of slapping at the leg. I wrap them and then I make sure that my blend matches all the way around that leg. Practicing with a two color blend just really gives you a feel for the paint and how they work together and it's a really good place to start. Going back to my top, I'm gonna to use this product called Carts and Millie Washed Away, and this color is called Coffs Jetty. It has a built-in sealer, so it gave a little bit of color to my natural wood top, and then also sealed it all in one. 
Now I'm ready and I'm gonna come back and repeat the same paint process on my body. This is gonna take two coats. So I do two coats exactly the same. The reason I do two blended coats is because it gives more saturated color in each place. If you were to do a solid color underneath and then blend over the top of that, you're not gonna get the same color saturation. So I tend towards two blended coats. My first coat was kind of my rough draft, so I didn't worry about per perfecting it. This one's gonna take a little more time. So I lay my paint on, and then I'm gonna come back with this one and a half inch round brush from Wiseau Paint, and I'm just gonna work those colors together. I did decide I wanna add a transfer around the skirting of this table, and I'm gonna use this one from Redesign with Prima. I'm just gonna cut off the edges of this damask print, and this is gonna be a perfect way to add some detail around the skirt for this table. Once I've got it cut off, I use the lines on my transfer just to find the cut line, it's nice and straight, and then I'm just gonna place it up against the lip of this table. Because I'm trying to take a flat piece of plastic and apply it over a rounded table, I just applied one of these pieces of trim at a time. I'm gonna rub over it with my transfer stick and pull back my clear backing sheet as I go. Once I've got each individual piece on, now I'm gonna go on and I can start placing the next one. This is how you have to apply a transfer to a curved piece and that's just because you're trying to get something flat onto a round surface. I chose this transfer because the colors in it suit my piece really well. It pulls in that uh, dark gray color. There's a little bit of dark gray in there. It has some white that stands out against the sage green. Um, and I like the style of it overall for the style of this table. I also felt like the shape of the damask matches some of the skirting on the table. This was a great use of this transfer too because I only used a small portion of it and I still have about two thirds of it left. I usually end up getting more than one use out of all of my transfers so it makes them multifunctional. And I love cutting them apart and seeing how different pieces can be used differently. It allows you to really reimagine the transfer. I started at the back edges of my table and I wrapped my transfer around to the front and now I'm gonna place a piece centered onto that front drawer and it's gonna give symmetry to this table and make that transfer look nice and centered. I use my hardware hole to find center on the drawer and I'm just gonna rub that on and pull that clear backing sheet off as I go. Make sure you burnish your transfer afterwards, rub that down to remove any air bubbles. So I had told you that I'm turning this table into a little entryway piece that includes a dresser mirror that I already had in my inventory. It's got this beautiful floral detail at the top and I really wanna bring that out. So I just took a cheap chip brush and I added a little bit of Carson Millie paint in this soft white. Um, I'm just gonna dry brush it over the top of my design. I laid a little bit of the paint onto a scrap piece of paper, uh, laid as much of it off of my brush so I have barely any paint on my brush as possible. And then I'm just gonna lightly hit the tips of those bristles over the top of any design on this that I wanna add a little bit of white to. This white is gonna tie into the little bit of white that's on the transfer that went on the base of this table. And this unified finish is gonna bring these two pieces together, although they're not a natural pair. With the finishes the same, they're gonna look perfect together. The other way I'm gonna emphasize all of the details on this mirror is with a little bit of black wax. So I just took a small artist brush, added a little bit of black wax into the crevices, and I'm gonna smudge that out using a slightly larger brush. Um, these are some natural bristle wax brushes that I use. Uh, they're not particularly expensive. I've got them available in my Amazon shop that I'll put in the description for this video. Then I'm gonna take a large uh, fluffy brush and I'm just gonna smudge some black wax into the corners of this mirror for a little bit of shading. So you might have kind of freaked out that I did paint directly onto this mirror. I don't tape my mirrors off at all. What I do at the end is I'll come back with a razor blade scraper and I'm gonna scrape away any paint from the edges of this. This gets my paint all the way up to the edge of my mirror without any gap and the razor blade scrapes it away super easily. I find that any time that I would have used in taping off my mirror, it takes about the same time to scrape it off afterwards and I actually think I get cleaner results this way. This is the final step I do when I'm painting any mirror is to do this scraping process. Um, and then once I've got it all scraped, I'll brush away all this debris that comes off. And then I'm gonna come back and clean my mirror using vinegar. Vinegar is a great glass cleaner. It leaves it streak free and gives me a nice, beautiful, clean mirror. My final step on this is I'm gonna go ahead and sponge on some clear coat. This is the Carts and Millie clear coat. It's gonna seal over the top of my paint, give me this nice smooth, smooth finish and seal in that transfer for me. I'm just wiping this on using a sponge. Um, I'm gonna wipe it over the top of my paint. I did lightly sand it before I added this clear coat and that just gives me the smoothest finish possible. 
With my clear coat nice and dry, I popped back in that one piece of hardware and this piece is complete. I think it's completely cute, you guys, I'm in love. I hope you enjoyed the process for this video and the makeover for this table, how to use those old dresser mirrors. You can find links for everything I use in the description for this video. And as always, you can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com. And don't forget to click that subscribe button.